right, so obviously you guys clicked on this video to see the information about the real way how to Euro step. That's further along in this video. Some of you guys are following because you want to know about the journey from the jumper's knee or the tendonitis, whatever you want to call it. But let's go over that first. I want to show you guys a couple of things. I feel really good right now. Best as I've ever felt in a long time. My knees aren't all the way there, but the thing is I have a lot of muscle. Muscle as in like muscles in my legs that I've never really had before. And it's helping out with my knees. So the best way I could describe what's going on, and no, I'm not an expert at it, but I'm starting to figure things out. All right, I'll do this. All right, so let's see if I can explain this the right way. Two sticks right here, an egg, and two pillows. These pillows are the muscle. All right, so the muscle in the lower leg and the muscle in the upper leg. In high school, I didn't have either one of those. My dad was really athletic. I saw my dad dunk when he was like, 45 or 46 out of my driveway on concrete jumped off one leg too i got a lot of that from him i was fast he was really fast uh, he was a baseball player also played basketball too so my thing was in my head i didn't really have to work on a lot of this stuff because i was already running fast and i was already jumping high so what ended up happening being that i didn't have the muscle right there in my leg all the pressure went to the tendonitis, I consider the egg the tendonitis. Over time, it would just push up against that instead of having muscle to really support it. And over time, pretty much that happened. Okay, now we have the bone, now we have the muscle. Matter of fact, we'll put the muscle right here. And we'll put the other muscle right here. Remember, this is our upper leg. So now we had a quadricep muscle and then we had a hamstring muscle down here supporting this and we had the same thing over here so just for lack of pillows i'll do this so now as it comes in contact with the egg it won't mess up the tendon so what i want to do is build these muscles to be stronger and also more elastic now, if that made no sense to you, I'm sorry, but that's the best way that I can describe it. But it's not just that. I'm building the toes, I'm building the hips, the glutes, all that type of stuff, the hip flexors. I don't want any imbalances. I don't want it to become a chain of compensation because the quadricep is weak, the, the uh, hamstring suffers, or because I have weak hips, something else suffers. Like, I want everything to be strong. So it could take the load off of the knee uh, when I jump up or I land. But here's one thing that I want to put out there, though. When you start feeling good, it's not time to start playing again. You need an extra two weeks to a month, and then you should be good after that. But I'm going to wait to see how this three months pans out, and then we'll go from there. I'm excited, man, because now you guys get to learn from the good things and the bad things that I do, and you won't have to make the same mistakes. Thank you. Thank you. There's nothing better in this world than the first sip of a nice cold beer after a long day. We'll make spaghetti squash spaghetti. I definitely wouldn't say that I'm eating super healthy. It's a big upgrade from what I was doing before though. I feel the difference when I work out. Yo, it's one thing to actually tell somebody, you know, that they need to eat healthy, that they need to do this crossover during this situation. But it's another thing to have like experience what you're telling somebody to do. So now, that I'm actually eating healthy. I can actually feel what's gonna happen to other players. Like, 
I feel my body recovering a lot faster. I feel that I'm coming back to these workouts more energetic. And when I played, I didn't eat like this. So I only wish that I would have started like way earlier, but this is good though. I think I'm on the right track. So I just want to keep going with all this. All right, so now for the Eurostep part. So I was working out two guys separately, both in some group workouts. And one was a high school, one was a little bit older. And I noticed when I had them doing Euro steps that it just looked like really weird. Like they were doing like these slow Euros that didn't really cover any ground. Actually, hold on, let me show you what it looked like. And I had to think about like these guys never do Euro steps in the game. So I got in the lab, looked up some high school footage, some college footage, some NBA stuff, found out some really good things. Now I can't use the college footage, you know, because of but copyrights and all that stuff. But take a look at this. This is what I came up with. <laughs> You're in the lab with Devin Williams. And without further ado, let's get to the reason why you clicked on this video. The Euro step. As you've seen, it's been around for a while. But let's take a real close look at it. How it's done, the situations, the similarities, you may pick up on something new. As you've seen, I've been making a lot of videos on Chino Hills. I guess that's where I started to draw my first samples. I started to see a pattern, but the more footage, the better. And who better to gather data from than the pros? The best players in the world, the MVPs. Probably the best I've seen do it. The fast break situations they would do it in. And even sometimes off the pick and roll. I started to get closer to the answers. I found a better way of teaching it because I personally think that they've mastered it. But anytime I say that, they take it to a different level. But after watching this clip, probably about 40 times, I started to figure it out a little bit more. The Euro step doesn't have to be done fast. You just have to sell that you're going in one direction. And sometimes it helps sell that you're going in that direction. You push off explosively and then make the read. If the defense slides with you, take a big step the other way. Covering ground on that jump is key. A jump. It really is like the jumping. So I started testing out on players. We started with the jump in both ways, up and down the court. Then we moved to that explosive step. And then put it into play. I could see it working. Everything was beginning to stick. But what else was there that I could draw from it? Was there anything that I left out? Back to the drawing board to gather more samples. What seems to be a never ending process. It never gets old, this way of learning. You come to the realization that you never knew anything at all. Observe, hypothesis, predictions, gather data, experiment, come back and repeat. And just like that, I came across something different. Never fails, film, something I can always count on. Ball placement. Now some players bring the ball really low after the Euro, even the guys that are good at it, that sometimes they keep it high. I would recommend keeping it high. But the reason why I say this is because I've rarely seen anyone get the ball stripped when it's at chest level or higher. Most commonly when the ball is lower, but hey, take it how you want. This tutorial won't teach you more than playing will. One of the last things to take note of is that the Euro step is actually a counter. Remember that explosive step we talked about? So after that's used, if the defense doesn't slide with you, you just continue on in that direction. Basketball is a game of reactions. You have to learn to read and react once you have the knowledge. It's one thing to read about sports, but it's another thing to play it. I'll have more about the Euros in the future. But we'll start here for now. We got lots and lots and lots more coming. Thanks for watching the video. And if you liked it, go ahead and click the like button. And we see a lot of you guys visiting. When you get tired of visiting us, go ahead and join us. Subscribe to the In the Lab YouTube page. Hey, but no pressure. We'll see you next time. And by the way, I know a lot of you guys are itching to call travel on a lot of those. And that's okay. You'll just never really master the Euro step.